so as I said, uh, we have been hearing from all of the sites um, through our audits that there's been an increase in bed bug activity in the client's homes. Um, so I'll be so I'll, it's so I'll be presenting to you on bed bugs this information from the LA County Department of Public Health, um, as well as sending out some additional resources that we've found, um, including handouts um, and uh, other sort of material that you can give to your clients so that they can have a better grasp on their um, bed bug situation, as well as questions you can ask or things to be on the lookout for both at the hospital and in the home. Um, for for those of you who are hostile liaisons and for those of you who are from other roles. So um, this presentation is, is will help you understand the life cycle of bed bugs, why we're seeing more cases in the United States, uh, how they can impact lives and where they tend to live and breed, and how to know you've been bitten, ways to get rid of bed bugs if you have them, and most importantly, how you prevent them. So the next few slides, we will discuss the bed bugs life cycle and eating pattern. So we'll go point by point in detail. So bed bugs sucks blood to live. Bed bugs need blood to survive and prefer human blood. And if human blood isn't available, it'll feed on any warm blooded animal's blood, including cats, dogs, rats, and mice. And they're not like ticks and they don't attach, but only remain as long as necessary to feed. Certain temperature and humidity are needed, but bed bugs live between nine to 18 months without feeding. In Southern California, adult bed bugs can live up to three months without feeding. Bed bugs go through a five stage development cycle. That means over a one to three month period, bed bugs eat a lot and outgrow and shed their skin five times before becoming adults. They start off as eggs the size of poppy seeds and end up adults a bit smaller than apple seeds. They crawl and move and crawl and move easily from place to place through small openings on luggage, clothes, and furniture. Uh, they're found around the world, especially in places with a lot of with a lot of rooms where people sleep, like apartments, single rooms for rent five-star hotels, college dorms, jails, prisons, long-term care facilities, and even hospitals. Bed bugs do not discriminate. Bed bugs may be present in what looks like a vacant and clean room or apartment. Any place that has a warm body can be a good home. They get, they get into places by crawling in through small openings in the wall, around pipes or wiring, behind a wall's electrical panels. Bed bugs do not fly or leap. They will climb into furniture, into luggage, and clothes. They're not very fun little creatures. Um, bed bugs don't spread disease, though. They don't spread disease like other blood-feeding insects like mosquitoes or fleas. But in the next few slides, we'll learn why, even though they don't spread disease, why they're a public health problem. And a couple of other additional notes about bed bug color and shape. A bed bug's color changes through their growth cycle from nearly white just after shedding to a light tan or deep brown or burnt orange in between shedding to a dark red or black mass within the bug's body after feeding. Their body shape changes after a meal. Before eating, an adult bed bug is flat with a circle shaped body. After a meal, its body is puffed out and longer. So this bed bug in this picture here is a female that has just finished feeding. So you can see how it's pretty dark and round. All right, so why have bed bug infestations ha increased in the United States and how they can affect and impact physical and mental health as well as financial health? So remember that in the previous slide, we talked about how bed bugs are found in the world, around the world, and they don't discriminate. That means they can happen and affect any one of us. Over the past years, bed bug infestations have increased in Southern California. It's common to see apartment buildings, hotels, motels, and shelters with severe infestations. So why is this? There's several reasons. There's more people and products that travel from place to place, making it easy for bed bugs to move around the world. Uh, people use a lot more used clothing and furniture. 
Um, so as they're changing hands, the bed bugs are changing hands. Uh, bed bugs are very small, so when you're use, getting these used things, it's very easy to miss unless you're looking for them very carefully. Uh, people don't are very busy and may, may not have time to upkeep the household cleaning to identify or treat the bed bug infestation. And last but not least, as all of you know and have seen and heard, many people have lost their jobs and are sharing apartments or homes with friends or relatives in crowded situation. And so this unfortunate situation has caused overcrowding and often results in too much clutter in the home, making it difficult to organize the living space or to th thoroughly clean it. So this gives bed bugs far too many places to hide and makes control efforts very difficult. Some other notes, um, so as you may know, uh, we, people think we, we, you're not allowed to use DDT on bed bugs. Um, DDT is a pesticide. So some people think that not being able to use DDT is the reason why there have been more cases of bed bugs, which is untrue. DDT um, was banned in the United States in 1972, and that's because birds like the bald eagle nearly became extinct after coming into contact with this chemical. The chemical stays in their body, as well as the human body, for de decades at a time. And there are other methods. So through thorough examinations and good cleaning practices uh, will help get rid of bed bugs. So, to stay safe, it's important to, to leave that kind of strong pesticide use to someone who is um, licensed and qualified. Um, okay, so though bed bugs don't spread disease like other blood feeding insects, such as mosquitoes and fleas, um, they can cause allergic reactions. When bed bugs bite, they inject saliva or spit. The saliva allows blood to flow freely and also numbs the bite. Some people are very allergic to the bud bug saliva and have severe allergic reactions to the bites. Uh, for the most people, bed bug bites produce itchy welts that look like mosquito bites. Uh, scratching a bed, bite, bed bug bite may cause an infection and that is more uh, susceptible in children and the elderly for uh, the risk of developing an infection because they're not be able, able to resist the urge to scratch as well as other adults. So asthma is bed bugs, since bed bugs grow, feed and grow and shed so often, they leave behind plenty of poop, skin, and eggshells that can make asthma symptoms worse. Uh, bed bugs eat frequently, especially during the larva cycle. So they, and they eat usually at night every five to 10 days for five to 10 minutes at a time. In severe infestations, a person may de develop anemia, which is low iron, after being bitten often and by many bugs. Again, children and the elderly may be at most risk for developing anemia. So many people also have difficulty sleeping as a result of bed bug infestations and the stress from having bed bugs and having to treat them and having to pay for treatment can also be harmful to a person's health. And it's a financial burden. So getting rid of bed bugs require working with a licensed pest management professional, which the landlord should be doing, um, but it can be an un un there can be unexpected costs associated with it, which can cause financial burden, which many of our clients certainly cannot afford and can cause undue stress. And um, last but not least, it's a health code violation. So the presence of bed bugs in a licensed and unlicensed housing is a health code violation. Live bed bugs must be found to confirm the health code violation, but the Los Angeles County Code says that maintaining rodent or pest harborage conditions un is unlawful. Um, so, no person shall occupy, maintain, or cause or permit another person to occupy or maintain any building, lot, premises, vehicle, or any other place in such a condition of construction or maintenance as will permit the breeding or harborage of therein or thereon of rodents, fleas, lice, bedbugs, mosquitoes, or any other vermin. So, if your clients are living in a place where there are bed bugs and the landlord's not doing anything about it, um, that is a health code violation and um, there are steps that can be taken for 
um, for for those um, for your clients to have some sort of recourse. Okay. So during the next few slides, um, we'll discuss where bed bugs like to live and why. So bed bugs like to live in places that are near where people are asleep. So remember that bed bugs prefer eating human blood. It's easier to feed on a human when they're asleep, and that's why feeding time usually begins around 10 p.m. But if you sleep during the day, bed bugs will feed during the day because they're attracted to the carbon dioxide that we breathe out as well as to our body heat. Living near where humans and pets sleep makes it easy for bed bugs to feed and hide again without being seen. So some examples are mattresses, box strings, bed frames, bedding, uh, night tables, alarm clocks, radios, tele telephones that are right next to where they sleep. They also like dry, rough, and dark places. Um, so that type of environment makes it easy for them to hide, which is can be clutter. If there's a lot of clutter at the baseboards, um, in the moldings where there's peeling paint or loosened wallpaper, um, in the outlets or, or light switch covers. There's also on fabric, wood, or paper surfaces. These surfaces are easier to live on compared to plastic, stone, plaster, or metal. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so some examples of these include couches, chairs, and wicker furniture with umbrellas, backpack, and luggage, picture frames, night tables, uh, clothing and hampers, curtains, rugs. If there's just a lot of clutter on the floor that is just piles of stuff, that, that is uh, very inviting to the bed bugs. So during the next few slides, we'll discuss ways you can tell if there are bed bugs in the home. The most common way people find out about bed bugs is when they wake up full of bed bug bites. Different insects and even skin conditions can cause itchy welts, so it's not always easy to know whether you've been bitten by a bed bug, but it's probably a bed bug if you wake up with itchy bed bites that look like mosquito bites or have bite bites on places on your body that were not covered by clothes or blankets such as your face, neck, hands, arms, lower legs. So for those hospital liaisons, if you see these kinds of bites, um, it's a question you can ask or you know, find a sensitive way to ask it, obviously, but um, it's just something to be on the lookout for. So sometimes these bites happen and happen three in a row or in a straight line pattern, but if the infestation is bad enough or if there are many bites, you won't see any type of pattern. It'll just be sort of a smattering as like in this picture. Okay, this lovely photo. Um, you say you might see streaks or spots of blood on bed sheets. Um, when the bugs, bed bugs feed, they inject saliva into the wound so that the blood flows and does not clot. Uh, when they're done eating, they remove their mouth parts so the wound continues to bleed a little for a short time before the blood clots, clots and seals the wound. Small amounts of blood will sometimes smear onto the sheets or the pillowcases, leaving blood dots or streaks. You might see nests, or otherwise known as brood centers. The brood centers are dark, sheltered locations where humans, uh, humans or pets sleep. Bed bugs group together in these areas where they lay their eggs, shed their skins, digest their meals, and poop. When you discover a nest, you'll find young and adult bed bugs, eggs, and thick, dark spots that are the digested blood. Use a flashlight to find all the nests in the home. Uh, bed bugs poop leaves black or rust-colored stains as they ha ha that happen as they walk or hide along the seams of a mattress or on a box spring. Most bed bugs, up to 85%, are found in the mattress and box springs or within 15 feet of the bed. Some nests may be unused or deserted. So just to recap, um, bed bugs like to live in mattresses, box springs, bed frames, bedding, picture frames, alarm clocks, radios, telephones, dressers, clothing, hampers, curtains, rugs, baseboards, and moldings. So live bed bugs, it's, um, it's possible to mistake other kinds of small brown bugs for bed bugs, but if you want to determine 
If there are bed bugs in your home, you need to find a live bed bug. After getting a sample bug, then that bug should be shown to pest management or to the housing inspector if you're trying to uh, get your, get a landlord or someone to uh, to make, do, take abatement measures. In the next couple of my slides, uh, you'll learn what it, to do if you have a bed bug bite. Um, so here's some more examples of what you might see um, on a client or what a bed bug bite will look like up, up the back and on an arm, on a leg like that. So most bed bug bites do not require medical attention. Remember that each person responds differently to the saliva that the bed bugs inject when they bite. That's why some people may need to use anti-itch creams to stop the itching caused by the bite, uh, first aid creams to prevent infection if you've been scratching, antihistamines in case you have an allergic reaction, and if, you're do if you think that your bite is infected, please talk to your medical provider. So, how do you get rid of bed bugs? Um, in apartments or hotels, bed bug infestations are rarely limited to one apartment or one room, and so it's important that the right people are working together to get rid of the bed bugs. In the next few slides, you'll learn things that you can do to get rid of bed bugs, who needs to be involved in the process of getting rid of bed bugs, and what role tenants, building management, and housing inspectors and pest management professionals play during the process. So a bed bug infestation can stress anyone out, but it's important to remember that you can successfully get rid of bed bugs if you stay calm and take the necessary steps. So working us alongside building management, housing inspector, and pest management professionals, you can get rid of the problem quickly and safely. So getting rid of bed bugs will involve the tenant calling building management uh, to report any sign of bed bugs, skins, eggs, eggshells, poop, dead bug be bed bugs, bites, and especially crawling bed bugs. Finding a live bug is the only way to document a health code violation. So then the building management has to hire a licensed pest management professional. Um, so it's the bed building management's responsibility, not the tenant's responsibility, to hire the licensed pest management professional. Um, so that person will come out to inspect your home to see if there's actually a bed bug pro problem. And remember that there are different kinds of bugs that cause itchy bites. So the, the pest management professional can determine what's causing the problem and how best to fix it. And licensed pest management professionals know which bug killing pesticides and chemicals and procedures are okay to use inside of the home. Um, so it's important to advocate with that building management um, instead of trying to use hazardous chemicals on your own. Um, they've gone under um, long hours of training to understand the biology and bed bugs, behavior of bed bugs, as well as what are the most effective products and procedures used in their control. All right. And the other part about getting management to work on it, bed bug exter extermination is out of reach for many clients. Um, it's the ha hiring a professional can be very expensive. It's uh, anywhere between five hundred and fifteen hundred dollars. So advocacy and um, using those type of resources are important since it is a health code violation. Um, so if the pest management professional finds bed bugs in the home, uh, follow all the directions are given so the treatment is pr successful. Um, if, they, if the housing inspector observes live bugs during an inspection, they will write a report and work with property management and the pest management company to make sure that the building is free of bugs. The next couple of slides will let you know what you or the client, the building management, what each group of people has to do to make sure that the bed bugs leave and stay away from the home. Okay, so as a renter, as a tenant, um, the, the responsibility is to let building management know that there is a possible bed bug problem. 
Describe what you found, what makes you think you have a bed bug problem. Prepare your home so that a licensed bed pest management professional can easily inspect and treat your home. <laughs> Excuse me. So never use any kind of pesticide, particularly the ones that are marketed um, for uh, like the, the, bed, the bombs and the sprays without speaking to uh, the licensed pest management professional because they don't necessarily work on bed bugs and an infestation will not be completely eliminated unless all the hiding places and nests are treated and cleaned. And most, and it's important to know that uh, that you'll be held, the tenant can be held legally responsible for using a bug spray incorrectly or applying it without a license to someone else's property, including common spaces in their building. So it's a big risk. So you can seal mattresses and box springs, and if possible, purchase special co covers for the bat mattresses and box springs known as encasements. They are easy to clean and e easy to spot evidence of bed bugs on the light colored material. So if you don't have bed bugs yet, this is not a bad idea to have this on your um, on a mattress. And they have specially designed zippers that keep bed bugs from getting inside the cover. And if any remain on the mattress or box string after the treatment, they can't get out and die. And they die inside the cover. Um, any other type of plastic cover may not be sealed correctly, so to, to keep the bed bugs out and to keep them in. So that, those are the encasements. So the other thing you can do is get rid of clutter. Um, seal trash and clutter that are folded papers, stacks of boxes, piles of clothing or linens, mat magazines, newspapers. So put them all in bags, seal them up in plastic bags and throw immediately throw them in the trash. Separate the parts of the bed frames to expose additional bed bug hiding sites. Remove drawers from desks and dressers and turn furniture over to inspect and clean all hiding spots. Scrub infested surfaces with a stiff brush to lift up eggs. Use a vacuum to remove the bed bugs and their eggs from the cracks and crevices. Empty the vacuum outside and immediately throw the bag away in a garbage bin or dumpster that is not inside the house. If you do not have a vacuum, scrub bed bugs and eggs up and out onto a newspaper like crumbs and fold it up and throw it away outside in a garbage bin or dumpster. And once you eliminate all the bed bugs from your mattress, box spring, and bed frame, you can prevent bed bugs from crawling up onto the bed and from other areas in the room by pulling the bed frame away from the wall, tucking the sheets and blankets so they don't touch the floor, moving the bed away from all else, tables and nightstands. Uh, wear night clothes that cover as much of the skin as possible since bed bugs cannot bite through fabric, although in this kind of heat that is kind of impractical, but as much as you can. Um, launder anything that can be washed and dried. You place sheets, pill pillowcases and blankets, clothing, stuffed animals, backpacks, and anything that fits into a clothes dryer in plastic bags ready to wash. Well, then wash the items with hot water and detergent, then dry them using the hottest setting. Open bags of linens and clothing just before washing and quickly get rid of the used bags in the trash bin and place washed items in clean, unused plastic bags and tie them up immediately. And open them only to remove the clean items and tie them up again to keep the bed bugs out. For items that can't be washed, running the dryer on the high settings for 20 minutes will kill the bed bugs and their eggs as long as the item is hot to, to, to the touch. So, and bag anything that can't be washed. And if you have items that can't go into a dryer, you can pack them in tightly sealed plastic bags and store them for a year. And that will kill any of the bed bugs and their eggs. So if they get tied off and, un, the, the, and unable to, to get out of that plastic bag, that will kill the bed bugs. So as we said, it is, it's a big burden, but it is possible to get rid of them. So check everything before returning home after the treatment. Check every item you bring home with, with you outside of your room on a white sheet on the floor, backpacks, suitcases, boxes, bags, clothes, coats, shoes you wore, everything. So, so it's a big, big ordeal. Um, and if you're going into a home that has bed bugs, um, maybe try to sit in a plastic chair, meet outside. Um, but it's worth knowing um, if it, to, 
about um, what to look for if you see a lot of clutter in the home. Uh, it just, you know, it's a question, question, these are questions that you can bring up. So what does the building manager do when they get called? Um, so they'll post a notice to let all tenants know that to report the bed bugs before the pest management visit. Um, they, it is their responsibility, as I said, to hire a pest management professional. And the best time to bring in that pest management professional is within the first 72 hours of finding a bed bug. And they are to communicate with tenants, housing inspectors, and that pest management professional. And they're legally liable if they do not apply a bug spray or powder correctly, if they apply it without a license. So include, like I said, in common spaces in their buildings. Um, so they should hire a licensed pest or bug control operator to develop a pest or bed bug management plan building wide. So if they're in one apartment, they need to treat the building. So the housing inspectors, um, if the building, if if they if anyone finds a crawling bed bug, it's a housing violation and it needs to be reported to a housing inspector. The licensed housing inspector will write a housing no notice to document where the live bed bugs and signs of bed bugs were found and give educational materials to management and tenants to make verbal recommendations to tenants that have so much clutter that may make the treatment fail and write a notice of violation to tenants with excessive clutter if treatments are un unsuccessful. So if there has been a, a, a bed bug that's been found and um, before I had mentioned that they need to, the tenants need to prepare their apartments for um, the press management pr professionals. So they one thing they need to do is get rid of this excessive cl clutter because then the housing ins uh, inspector can come in and write a violation if the treatments were unsuccessful due to some piles of excessive clutter. So pest management professionals must inspect the rooms before and after treatments. It can take up to two hours to inspect one room for bed bugs. And they must be inspected again for hitchhiking bugs, bed bugs after the tenants move back into the room. So to clear a property of bed bugs using steam and heat, heat guns and other authorized methods. So Steam, which is 212 degrees Fahrenheit, can kill bed bugs instantly. Heat chambers can be used to can be used to keep items such as books, shoes, and other things like that at a temperature of 120 degrees Fahrenheit for four hours to kill uh, kill the bed bugs. They um, they'll use uh, monitoring devices that use carbon dioxide and body temperature heat and the odor of perspiration to attract the bed bugs, both to verify an infestation and to confirm whether the treatment worked. So clearing a property of bed bugs can require at least two visits, um, and some bed bug infestations can require four or more visits. Um, so again, you know, they're the Pest management professionals are being held responsible for the clearing the infestation, and if anyone gets in their way by not clearing the clutter or making time for the treatment or allowing them into the apartment, they could be reported to the housing inspector, who in turn will write a notice of violation. So if you're, the building management has uh, called a pest management professional, it's important that the tenants are um, cooperating and working with the, the inst exterminators. All right. So how can you prevent bed bugs in, in the home? So a big part of bed bug prevention and treatment involves looking for signs of bed bugs. So some signs include the streaks of blood or black specks or the brood centers and the crawling bugs. But if you search for them during a regular cleaning routine to save time, you can use a flashlight to look along mattress seams, and once in a while you might want to look under the mattress or the box spring, on or behind the headboard, and check behind the bedboard and the wall behind it. People can also look behind the framed pictures that are hung above the bed, look inside the nightstands and the dresser drawers, and pay close attention to the drawer edges and the, the corners. Um, they should look also in holes in walls, in torn carpeting, 
And if you're a tenant, report those holes in the walls or torn carpeting to your building management so report repairs can be made. But if you're the if you're the manager or if whoever that that hole just needs to be made the the it just needs to re, re, be repaired as soon as possible. So uh, you know through a regular cleaning routine, looking for these kind of places um, and to, to see the beginnings of an infestation, it, it's easier to deal with once than if it gets bad. So those are some good so good places to check regularly the edges of carpets and baseboards and clocks and radios near the nightstands again they 85% happen you know in in the bed or within 15 feet of the bed so those are places to look another you know spines of hardcover books they can be found um, so these places make it easy for them to safely feed and return to their brood center. So another thing you can do is check new and used items before bringing them home. Um, so items like bed bugs like to hide it in towels, mattresses, bedding, uh, which are the blankets, sheets, comforters, etc. Cl clothing, suitcases, duffel bags, purses, backpacks, etc. So in clothes, um, to follow the tips, follow these tips to prevent bringing bed bugs home with you through clothes. So you can unfold seams, cuffs, collars, and look for signs of bed bugs. Turn your po turn the pockets inside out. Um, use a plastic bag or washable reusable bag to bring your things home. Double knot the bag before bringing it home. Bring a few plastic bags with you to the store if you know if you don't know if they're they'll be available. Wash and dry items using, including the reusable bag, if that's what you used, immediately after buying them. Put non-washable items in the dryer on the highest heat setting for at least 20 minutes to kill bed bugs and their eggs. If you're using furniture, look for ink-like stains on furniture, cushions, or live bed bugs. Um, check the folds and seams and pockets of umbrellas, backpacks, curtains, luggage, and turn purses, bags, wallets upside down to check each of their corners. So remember that all kinds of places can be infested with bed bugs, from the most expensive hotels to the cheapest motels. So that's why it's important that you handle your luggage and belongings carefully during and after your trip, or in our case, uh, when you're going into a home. So try to use a hard suitcase or a duffel bag or, or even like a plastic. I know that some of our sites, they have um, clear plastic bags. Um, a hard suit surface is is not an ideal living surface for a bed bug to hide in or hitch a hike, hitchhike a ride to your home. Um, bed bugs prefer wood or paper surfaces, and a duffel bag can be put um, in the washer dry and dryer on high heat setting to kill any bed bugs. So I think um, good to know that anything you can put in a dryer is um, much easier to treat than anything else. So keep your belongings in the bag and avoid throwing your having your things on the bed or on the floor. And keep your bag closed when you're not using it, which will make it harder for the bed bugs to come home with you inside the luggage or the bag that you've brought into in, into the home with you. So keep your suitcase or your bag and clothes away from the bed and use any racks or shelves at a distance from beds instead of placing the bag on the bed or on the floor. Um, for those of you who are going into homes, you know, scan the mattress or headboard, um, just make an assessment of the, the environment and um, may not be in our scope to go looking at the mattress for streaks of blood or black specks, but if you um have an opportunity if, if the if it comes up with your client you know at least you know what to tell them to look for um which is the brood centers and the odor and the crawling bugs so if um after a trip or after you know keep keep your bags away from your the bedroom so if you're bringing your purse home or something maybe don't immediately put it on your bed um, look for signs of bed bugs, um, and as soon as possible, you can wash and dry everything you can on high heat if you feel like you've been exposed. So, um, 
that was there there was a lot of information here um so we went over what a bed bug is and where they like to to live and how what they like to eat and that they don't spread disease but they do um cause psychological distress financial burdens and um, allergic reactions as well as anemia and asthma um, we know where they live which is in the bed or on the mattress or 15 feet of away from where people sleep um, we know that if you have bites or you see the the blood streaks and the brood centers you probably got bed bugs we know that heat kills them and that there's a whole process with the tenant reporting the problem to the building management and they're using professional pest management and that's how you get treat and get rid of them and we know how to prevent them which is to seal your mattress to keep a clean home and to just stay vigilant and use your dryer uh, liberally so um that's that, that's the wrap up here do we have any questions um i'm gonna go ahead and unmute you just as a an experiment if it gets too loud i will uh unmute i will mute you back and um, you can ask any questions using the chat function so i'm going to just unmute you now are there any questions about bed bugs Do we have any questions? No questions? from Sentinel, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, do we need to be concerned about bed bugs being spread person to person? I'm sorry, you may have covered that in the beginning. I just don't remember. Um, that's not the common way, but if someone has bed bugs on their clothes, I think it is a possibility, but it's not. I don't think that's the most common way. Um, I think... I mean, they, from what I, from my research that I've found out, it's mostly um, if you're in the, in a location, they'll jump, they'll hop on like hitchhiking, as they called it. But um, I'm not so sure about I can about the person to person. Um, but from my, what I understand, that's not that's not as common. But I think it is possible if it's okay, on the Thank course. you. Mm -hmm. But I will confirm. So I have compiled some handouts, and uh, and I will send out these slides, um, and as well as um, Steve has a whole blog post about bed bugs. Um, along with resources and the health department's resources, vector management, all of the, the county resources um, for, for tenants to use. And again, um, it, since it is a health code violation and most of our clients are renters, um, they should know what their rights are in terms of the, having a place to live that does not harbor bed bugs. Um, so I just wanted to really reiterate that. And yeah, so if there's no other questions, we can, are there any other things, any questions about anything else that anyone would like to to talk about? Um, we, hey Malika. A, yes? This is Jill. Hi. And I just wanted to let you know that Elaine uh, Carlos was 
was able to join us as well. Okay, yes, I actually already marked her. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, so um, that concludes our presentation. Um, and if you, and like I said, I'll send out those other resources. Um, and if you have any other questions or need any other resources, or if you have any good resources, um, we would be, I would be happy to sh share them with the rest of the group. Okay, thanks for your time and your attention, and we will. Talk to you next time. Thank you.